Hi, welcome to the second part of our Teachable Moments series, where we look at Luke's parable of the prodigal son. Today we're investigating the younger son as seen in Henry Nouwen's book based on his reflections of Rembrandt's painting of the prodigal son, which is housed in the Hermitage Museum in St. Petersburg. Rembrandt painted this masterpiece at the very end of his life, and by looking at the faces and the postures of those in the painting, I can understand where Nowen says, I see it as a final statement of a tumultuous and tormented life. These are not generic faces painted by a young man who has not experienced life over many, many years. They're filled with like a hundred different emotions. We consider this difficult son who had the temerity to ask for his share of his father's wealth, which was tantamount to wishing that his father was dead. It's difficult for me to relate to that, that kind of behavior. But this study is about the return, not the leaving, and we can all relate to some form of having messed up, having to eat our words, and having to ask for forgiveness. One of the first things that I noticed in this painting in looking at the sun is how he doesn't have a shoe on his left foot. Showing the sole of your foot in an icon is a symbol of vulnerability. And this younger son certainly is at his most vulnerable at this point in his life. He has lost or squandered everything and has no option but to beg for a job equivalent to that of his lowest worker of his father's estate. There's no welfare state, remember, and he needs food. If you look at the clothing, you see rags. The father and the older son, of course, are wearing red robes, which are symbols of wealth. The younger son is wearing scraps. His yearning for the distant lands, which was like searching for a world where the culture and the customs and everything that's familiar, including the holiest things that he could think of, were all disregarded. Nothing would be the same once he went to that distant land. Is, something, is this something with which you might be familiar? I remember how in high school I began experimenting with different religions. My mother was hurt and frightened for me as I, for a time, rejected the Episcopal roots that I grew up with and became a Christian scientist. I wanted clear black and white answers to theological issues and our church is not known for black and white answers. Can you think of a time when you might have lived that life apart from your family and your friends and everything that you previously held as sacred? In the famous words of Dr. Phil, how'd that work for you? Fortunately, we're not really dealing with a, a human father here. Luke is using this story to teach us about our Heavenly Father, the one whose voice says, you are my beloved, on you my favor rests. It's the voice that now and says, it's the same voice that speaks to all the children of God and sets them free to live in the midst of a dark world while remaining in the light. Beautiful. When I heard that voice now and says, I know that I'm home with God and I have nothing to fear. Have you experienced that? I know I have. And yet, over and over again, we leave God's side and wander off. Again and again, he welcomes us home. Look again at that painting. Can you see yourself in that sun? Realizing that yes, once again, you have left God's presence and gone looking for love in all the wrong places. We all tend to look for acceptance from our peers, from our family, from our friends, from our co-workers, or we want to look a certain way, wear a certain type of clothing to be acceptable to a certain set of people. Why? Many of us are driven by the Protestant work ethic, where we measure ourselves according to how productive we've been each day. I tend to fall into that trap. Who are we trying to impress? This illustration shows us that living in that different land 
doesn't give us peace. This is not to say that we shouldn't work hard. Don't misunderstand me. It's more to say this is not a great place to look for our sense of peace or love or self-worth. All of that comes from the Father. Something else that surprised me, um, and which I had not noticed previously, is that the son still has his sword. Well, you may well think that he could have sold that and gotten himself a few good meals. But no, it was his badge of nobility, a symbol of his noble birth. Even the son, at his lowest point, knew that he had not completely lost his identity. He was still the son of the father. The day he looked at that sword and remembered his family and his father, he was able to turn homeward. He recognized how lost he was. He recognized that the way he was living was not the life he wished to live. And he went home. Where have you been and what have you found in your lives that calls you back to the Father? Can you move about in this painting and see who you are? Are you the father? The younger son, perhaps? Or the eldest son? There's so many ways in which to reflect about our relationship to God in this painting. It's worth spending some time in these contemplations. Thank you so much for joining me today. It's been a joy.